Hey everybody! Saturday night! Let's do a little bit of Jimmy Buffett here. I know why in the Caribbean that they love him. They do that whole little wave thing? No. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, so... <clears throat> I was in the Caribbean last year. I was in the Caribbean back in last November. I actually swam with huge, huge sea turtles. And um, it was one of the most, the, one of the coolest experiences of my life, actually. Only problem was, is we drove out on a, on a big pirate boat, <clears throat> and we were, I think they were drinking these things called painkillers, and just enjoying myself, enjoying myself to the max. I had my feet dangling off the front end of the boat, and we're like going over to this little turtle island kind of a thing. And, um, had no idea about the level, the depth of the water and things like that because it was so clear. It was crystal clear, so it looked like three feet deep when it was reality about 40 or 50 feet deep. So we get to this little cove where these turtles are at and, <clears throat> pardon me, and they're like, jump on, jump on now. After the whole way, they've been talking about all these sharks and that would be a bad thing if a shark came into the cove and I'm just, I'm just being very quiet on the way out there listening to this whole thing thinking, yeah, that'd be a really bad thing if a shark came into the cove, especially if you're about to throw my butt out in there. So, <clears throat> I, I, they tell us to jump in, pardon me, and I jump out there and I have a panic attack. And I'm like, oh, I can't do this. Like, I just can't do this. A shark can swim up underneath me. That's my imagination going crazy, crazy, crazy. And they're like, acclimate, acclimate. I'm like, no, get me out. <clears throat> and my mom's like, don't do it, Missy, stay out there. So I stayed out there. Ended up being one of the best experiences of my life. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. I got to snorkel, and I had like these these uh, masks, this mask on. And we went up by these coral reefs and stuff, and all these beautifully vibrant fish would swim like this close to your nose across your mask. So I'm snorkeling, right? I have my little pole out of the water. I'm trying to breathe. But every time a fish swims across my mask, I'm like, whoa! <laughs> because I just couldn't believe the vibrancy and the colors. So, absolutely astounding. Absolutely marvelous trip. I'm in the mood. And Jimmy Buffett kind of gives us a lend to the music that was in our scenery back then. So, I've been listening to Jimmy Buffett all day. I totally get why people in the Caribbean listen to Jimmy Buffett. Because they're laid back. It's like, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's a good thing. So, the reason I'm coming to you tonight, there is a method, method to my madness. Um, it started off with the scripture. And this is a prophetic warning, actually, for people. Let me cut this down so I can really get your attention so I'm not distracted either. started off the other day when I read this scripture, and it's been I've just been kind of chewing on it. Because the Lord usually unfolds things in front of me. So, the scripture is based on Numbers 5, 6, and it says, If any of the people, men or women, betray the Lord by doing wrong to another person, they are guilty. They're guilty. So I thought, hmm, what does that mean, Lord? Why does that stick out to my spirit so much? <clears throat> and many of us have been wronged and have gone through, and I don't want to sound like I'm, uh, I'm not going to make excuses for it. That's what it is. We have been wronged. There have been many things we've each had to walk through to get into the place, into the position that we currently reside in. And so a lot of injustices have occurred, a lot of deep hurts. If this isn't ministering to you, I'm hoping it is, but I'm telling you this is a right now word. And so God has had us move forward. Okay, a lot of us are in transition, big time in transition. So Part of that transition, you may be between relationships, you may be between jobs, you may be between destinies. I know for me, I'm in all the above, all the above categories. So my point is, when you're in between, you're going to have attacks, okay? So I had a dream last night. I had a dream that I was in a scenario again with an old, an old someone in my background, pardon me, pardon me, and um. Drinking Dr. Pepper Coke does that to you sometimes. So I'm in this scenario with this person from my past, and we were at a fashion show, and they were really mad that I was there. I could sense it, but the Spirit and the Holy Spirit showed it to me while I'm in my dream. 
And so I looked at them point blank and I said, the only reason why you're angry is because I got hired here. And I said, and what business is it of yours? And then boom, I woke up from my dream this morning. But I was so freaked out by the whole point that this person was in my dream. And I was like, what does that mean, Lord? Because they're from my past and I don't ever want to go back into that relationship again. That was horrible. That was just abusive and no. And so I said, and besides, there wouldn't be a connection with that person anyway because of their disposition. And, and you judged them, Lord. You judged them. And so the Lord said, yeah, but they have an influence into somebody else's life that is thinking about coming up alongside of you again. And, and at first I was kind of flattered. I thought, hmm, hmm, that could be lucrative. That could be very lucrative for me. And as I went throughout the day, then I started asking questions. Lord, what is, is it in that person, the first person's environment where they're at right now that you're thinking that could be lucrative you're drawing me into? And the Lord said, no. And I said, who are they connected to where they're trying to influence? And they put it in an older environment that I used to be in. And I was even more freaked out. I thought, oh, no, I would not ever go back there. No. You dusted this prophet's sandals off and we we ran out of town. We didn't have to walk. We ran. So it was because the Lord showed me that the, the and people in that environment went back to like a dog to their vomit. They went back to old behavior patterns. And so my point in telling you this whole thing. Uh oh, I messed up my microphone here. Isn't that pretty cool? That's pretty cool. Uh, technology. So long story short, people in my old environment, and this is yours too. You came out of an environment where the anointing on your life sustained that environment. Okay? God, you didn't have anything to do with it. You might have been really blessed in that environment, but the anointing is gone now. The grace to be in that environment is gone. So the enemy is coming back at a lot of us right here, right now, with where we're currently at in transition. Pardon me. And he's trying to play on our egos. He's trying to stroke our egos and saying, you did such a great job in that other environment that it's all about you. You did it all. And God's like, no, 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 no. Had nothing to do with you. Had everything to do with me. So I had to wake up and I had to go through a series of questions with the Lord. And it's like he took me down this stair step thing to the truth. To letting me see how the enemy was setting me up. He's setting you up because of you're not knowing what to do next. And this is because people in these old environments that we were in, once the anointing is pulled out of those environments, chaos ensues. Chaos ensues. You know, that, that is just really not going to work real, real quick. But we're going to have to fix that. Bear with me. So anyway, chaos ensues. And so because chaos ensues, because you're gone now, your vessel's been pulled out of that environment. To be blessed, by the way, to be blessed, the last thing you want to do, Lot's wife, is look back because you'll disintegrate because of the heat of the chaos in that environment that's coming on that environment. You will disintegrate. You'll crumble. The Lord's words exactly were, if you look back, you will crumble, Lot's wife. So, now, the prophetic word of warning right now for each of us is while we're in transition, the last thing we want to do is be drawn in by the enemy because of, uh, what do you call it? It's not stimulation. It's, it's, it's through pride. It's really through pride and thinking, oh, they've missed me now. I can go back because... Now they realized my worth. I can go back. Lord says, no, I never meant for you to go back. No, I've lifted you up for such a time as this. I've drawn you out of that point A environment and I'm taking you to destiny. I'm taking you into the real blessing. See, the old place was a transitional place too, but it was also a testing place. There's no more grace for you to be there. If you were to go back and get goaded by the enemy to go back into those abusive environments, you would digress. You would be digressing and you would get stuck. That's why you can't go back. You can't go back. This does not pertain to family relationships and things like that. These are 
relationships outside of your immediate family. <coughs> Pardon me. But the Lord really, really wants you to know this is the strategy of the enemy for this hour because so many people aren't really sure what their next step is. For it says, this is your directive for your next step. This prophetic word is your directives for the next step. He said, the footsteps of a righteous man or woman are ordered by the Lord. He said, have I not provided for you in this place? I have literally provided for you, for many of you, and given you an exorbitant amount of money. That's the truth that just came out of my mouth, by the way. That's the Lord. <clears throat> um, to live on. To live on. Um, more than you ever anticipated. Like you've never seen God provide. Like you're seeing him provide in this place. What says, that's how you know my hand is there. My hand of blessing is there to sustain you. I never take you anywhere that I don't sustain you. I never take you anywhere that I don't provide for you, says the Lord. So for you to fall prey to the enemy's tactics, see, he's trying to gold you back into old behavior patterns that I've delivered you up out of. I've taught you about abuse. I've talked to you about how to war against abusive spirits. And the Lord says, now I'm testing my work. I'm testing my work to see if you can maintain, to see if you can recognize the ploys of the enemy. And look, I'm even making the test easy. I'm warning you. I'm warning you that this is going on in and around you. So this is an easy no-brainer, guys. This is a no-brainer, okay? I'm just giving you a heads up tonight. I could not get home fast enough to tell you about this. And I wanted to let you know this is what the Lord's trying to do for each one of us. Oh, gone. I shut my music off. Here, I'll open it back up again because I'm going to let you listen to Jimmy Buffett. He's awesome. He's awesome. So tonight, before you go, and I'm going to have another word probably tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe not. My hope is that I do. Um, but I, I've been giving really a lot of, uh, been given a lot of prophetic words. Tonight I was really, really shocked by this one. Actually, it came out of nowhere. And I had to get over here and I had to tell you. Um, if you haven't been joining me, I'm just going to give you a heads up. Um, I have finished my Texas book tour. I told you guys about that. So Memoirs is still progressing, getting geared up for my second book to come out this December. It's going to be starting publishing in June. Don't know the title of it yet. It's somewhere in between dealing with obstacles. It's going to maybe have a title of ADHD. Not sure about that yet. Still working on that. But <clears throat> this is my next idea. If you haven't been keeping up with me on Facebook, join me. Follow me on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Um, Twitter. I think it's Missy, lowercase Missy underscore Hood on Twitter. I'm on Facebook at Melissa Hood. I have an author page there. I also have a private page. If I invite you onto my private page, um, I predominantly use that for business purposes too, but um, come out and join me. Follow me, man. We're learning. We're growing together, and I'm getting ready to start a new product line of t-shirts. If you see a blog post on my WordPress account that you like and you want to wear, send it to me at casual, no, let me say it, memoirs of an ADHD mind at austin.rr.com. And I'll print it up for you for $26.95. That's a fair price. That covers my cost of the t-shirt and um, time. A little bit of time. So, but anyway, it also, you'll get the branding of Tame Your Brain on the front. However you want to do it. I can also put it on the back, the, the branding logo in the center. And then put your front blog thing on the front or the back. Your choice. You tell me. Let me know. I'll be glad to do it for you. So $26.95, you can pay, pay through PayPal. Um, also <clears throat> selling my book for $12.95. You can buy memoirs of an ADHD mind at amazon.com or any Barnes and Noble. You can get it online even. And I even saw it the other day on eBay. It's being sold in France now, in the UK, um, all over the world now. We're going all over the world, baby. I may even be going to Bali in August. It'll be Bali or Australia. And then I'll be in LA for Authors 101 conference in October. So, hot dog niggity, we're going there. So anyway, <clears throat> I'll hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Hope you have a blessed evening. Thanks for joining me tonight, man. And you be blessed. No, I love you. And I'm praying for you. Bye.